there has been a lot of discussion on homosexuality recently, and I am surprised at um, many um, of the Christians um, in their responses uh, to this particular issue. One of the responses um, that I have I have noticed um, is to respond with, "Hey, homosexuality is a sin like any other sin. Um, why?" overemphasize or focus on this one particular sin uh, when there are many sins that people commit every day gossiping lying stealing and uh, I find that um, a very odd response um, especially when the Bible um, does talk about particular sins that are heinous uh, that are abominations uh, detestable uh, in the sight of God so we would not uh, want to simply respond with a blanket response, well, it's a sin like any other sin. And I don't believe it is appropriate uh, to say that the church is overemphasizing this sin when the culture is essentially um, slamming this down uh, the throat of this nation. And as Christians, we should be able to respond to that particular sin. You're not seeing lying parades. Um, you're not seeing adulterers uh, attempt to redefine marriage. You are seeing homosexuality parades. You are seeing uh, uh, the homosexual agenda attempt to redefine marriage. Uh, so the church has every right to respond to this particular sin as it is growing uh, in our culture. Um, I, I wonder though, and I find this um, slightly amazing, if you look at 1 Corinthians and how Paul was dealing with the church there that obviously had many problems, Paul, in regards to a particular sin of fornication, writes uh, this way in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It is reported commonly uh, that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Now, I find it very interesting that Paul even points out that this particular sin was not even occurring among the Gentiles and it was actually occurring uh, with this church. So he does point out um, a seriousness and a uniqueness um, about what this sin uh, was in the sense of being compared to uh, Gentiles that were not even uh, um, committing this particular sin. But it's interesting, if you go on to read, he says in verse 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Now Paul goes on to talk about um, many issues regarding the, Corinth, uh, the church in Corinth. But I find it interesting that it, he is only asking in this particular sense that this particular individual committing this particular sin uh, to be excommunicated from the church. But the point of it was not to alienate the individual, highlight one sin uh, in such a way as to diminish other sins um, in, their, uh, in how they affect the church and how they affect others. But Paul does not go on throughout the book of Corinth and begin to say you need to throw out uh, <clears throat> those that are mispracticing the uh, the Lord's Supper. Uh, that's why many of you sleep. He didn't. He, uh, he exhorted them. But in this particular case, uh, Paul says, for this fornicator, excommunicate him. Put him outside of the church. But the point of it was not so um, they would stone him. It was not so uh, that the person would be seen as less than anyone else. The point of it was so that the spirit may be saved. Now, contrast that today with many churches that are essentially inviting the homosexual in. Um, this is obviously a sexual immoral act. And instead of disciplining uh, the individual and setting them outside of the church for the purposes of their spirit being saved, they're being invited in. Um, and so much so as for some pastors to begin to unite them in holy matrimony. Um, we've, we have even seen 
lesbian and homosexual priests and pastors uh, get the go-ahead from um, different denominations. This is obviously a disturbing um, inverse uh, that um, the church did not um, initially have. Imagine, if you would, if the church of Corinth responded to Paul saying, you know, Jesus is love, and you're, you just need to love this fornicator uh, and, and be kind to him. Or imagine if the response of Corinth was, you know what, all, we need to deal with all sins because all sins are the same, not just particular sins. Or, or, or imagine the church in Corinth saying, Paul, you know, you're just a hate monger. You're a homophobe. Um, you know, th those we didn't see that response from the church in Corinth. And in fact, uh, when we read 2 Corinthians, we understand that there was sorrow there, true repentance. Um, and Paul exhorts the church to receive him back. So there was a happy ending to this. But regarding the church today, um, it is doing the complete opposite of what is prescribed in Scripture over this particular sin. It is being trivialized as a sin like any other sin because we lie, we cheat, and we steal. Um, so if we were going to throw out the homosexual, if we're going to throw out the fornicator, we must also throw out the liar. Uh, we must throw out the gossiper. Uh, the fact of the matter is we don't see that sort of action uh, occurring with Paul in the book of Corinth. It was for this very sexual Im immoral behavior that Paul was saying put him out. Um, now, what I am essentially saying is this. When we get to this particular issue, many of you may have friends, um, know someone that has a friend that is homosexual. You may even have some family member uh, that is uh, homosexual. We have to understand a couple of things, but one is we need to speak the truth in love. Uh, we're not just supposed to be about love in that sense. We have to tell them the truth. Regarding the church, there is no question uh, what the church should be doing on this issue, and it, and it should not be inviting them in. Um, the church is designed for believers to come together for corporate worship. It is to be a beacon and a light and an, an example of the kingdom of Christ here on earth. And we're, we are not to uh, begin to make light of a sin that is very serious and is heinous in the sight of God and to trivialize it by demoting it into a category of all sins because all sins are not the same in regards to the scope, in regards to the damage that they can do. Um, and certainly this particular sin um, can cause uh, tons of diseases um, and that has been statistically proven as well as fornication. But just the the idea of sexual immorality um, has a wider scope of damage that can be done. One does not get a disease from lying. Uh, just to point out a, a little uh, distinction there. So it is it is very serious in, in regards to what it can do and damage an individual and other individuals. So we have to be careful that we do not diminish the sin of homosexuality in, in such a way that we trivialize it in the face of a culture that is promoting it. So the church has every reason and right to speak about this particular sin, to stand up biblically uh, to the Dan Savages of the world um, and many other homosexual uh, promoters and stand on biblical principles. Uh, the church that has caved in on so many issues uh, should not be caving in on this one. And so I would like to encourage those uh, as ministers and uh, those that are members of churches uh, to understand that as Christians we are to stand out from the world and especially on this issue and Christians have every right to stand up against this sin and should be in full support of their pastors uh, that have uh, taken um, a, resp a biblical response uh, to this culture um, in this particular sin and um, we should be praying and uh, keeping uh, the saints in mind um, as we go forward regarding this culture that is obviously uh, beginning to 
um, love sin more and more and hate God more and more. So um, let's keep those things in mind. Let's stay biblically minded. And if none go with, with us on this issue, we will still follow the words of Christ and what the Bible says. Thanks for listening.